magnify you. We glorify you. We give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. As only we can do, Father, unto you, our all-wise, all-wise, all-knowing, all-righteous God, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and for his sake, O oh God. Amen. All righty. This evening, we are still in Acts chapter 7. Uh, we only got to verse number 5. We only got to verse number 5 last week. So, Acts chapter 7 um, is a uh, quick, quick review. Um, Stephen has been lied on by uh, church folk uh, of, of the Jewish faith. It's the Jewish faith. Lied on by people of the Jewish faith. They said, we, we have heard him speak blas blasphemy about this tabernacle, about this temple. Um, they, they quote, they quote Stephen quoting Jesus, right? And he said they uh, destroyed this temple in three days. I raise them. all these things. They, 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 they bring uh, uh, against him about him not keeping the law of Moses and him speaking blasphemous about Moses, right? So you need to know all of these are. This is a Jewish. Stephen is Jewish. He's um, preaching a gospel to not just. Jews, but he's preaching the gospel to Gentiles as well. He's preaching that gospel, and in preaching that gospel, the Jews don't like it uh, because the Jews don't like Jesus. You remember Jesus tells them, he says that, that they're going to hate you for my sake. Uh, uh, and, and this is the fruition of Jesus' words coming to bear, coming to bear in Acts chapter 7. Uh, so Stephen, uh, instead of uh, 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 refuting what they're saying, right? Stephen rebuts what they're saying, but he rebuts what they're saying, uh, holding fast the three T's, and I, I, I remind y'all every every time I talk about this, the three T's of Judaism, I, I want you to put it in the chat if you remember the three T's. There are three T's that guides Judaism. Uh, he rebuts them based off of those three T's of Judaism. Um, I want to see if anybody's going to put it in the chat. Anybody remember? Anybody remember the three T's? Anybody that was on last week remember the three T's that I, and I've said this at least for the last three or four years that I've been doing Bible study. There are three T's in Judaism that guides Judaism. Uh, three T's. And I'm going to see if anybody get it. I don't see nobody writing yet. I don't see nobody. I don't see nobody. I see we got six viewers, but nobody's writing in the chat yet what the three T's are. There are three T's. Three T's. Let's see. Talent, temple, tradition. You the clo you close. It's the temple, the tradition, the Talmud, the Talmud, or the law. The Talmud, or the law. You are absolutely correct. The Talmud, the temple, the tradition. The Talmud, the tr temple, the tradition. Those are the three T's that guide Judaism. The Talmud is the law. The law. The temple is where uh, God's name dwelt. The Talmud, the temple, the tradition. The tra tradition is what had been passed down to them from um, their forefathers. So those three T's guide them. So Stephen approaches his rebuttal to the Jews off of the three T's. Um, in this, in, this in, um, in verse number one through five, he's linking his argument to the, 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 the patriarch of the faith, who was Abraham. And he talks about Abraham's faithfulness and how his faithfulness is counted unto him as righteousness and how Abraham literally leaves the land, leaves the land that he knows, uh, goes to a land that he does not know, following after this guy. So he links it to Abraham. So we are in verse number six. We're in chapter seven, verse number six. And God spoke on this wise that his seed, so, so, should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge said God and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place and he gave him the covenant of circumcision and so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs so let's stop there so Abraham is the, the, the father of the faith. God made him a promise. He walks in that promise. Uh, verse number six, God tells him that his seed, his children, his descendants, 
his um his 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 children are going to sojourn in the strange land, right? And that strange land, you remember that story? Um, they go. They go. Uh, okay, my thing was. Um, then they leave Cana, and they go down to um, Egypt, right? You remember how they got to Egypt because there was a famine in Cana, uh, and they had sold uh, Jacob's favorite son, Joseph, into slavery. Uh, his brother sold him into slavery, sold him into slavery, sent him down to um, Egypt, and there he went from the prison, to, from the pit, he goes from the pit, goes to the prison, and then because he interprets dreams, he ends up making it to the palace, right? So we remember that, we remember that. And uh, his brothers go down there because Joseph has wisdom, and God blesses him with that wisdom, so he's able to discern and he's able to, to interpret dreams. Not only that, uh, God has given him favor in the sight of Pharaoh, making him the second in command in the whole land. So when his brothers come down to buy food, when there's a famine in Cana, uh, Joseph sees them, and uh, eventually they all come down from Cana. He moves them down from Cana down to Egypt, um, and uh, his brothers, and this is what he says in G uh, Genesis 50, 20, after his father died, his brothers feared that he would try to destroy them. He says to them, what you meant for evil, God used for good. He sent me down here before you, right? Before you so that I might be able to, to set us up so that our people could come here. And in doing that, God was uh, really fulfilling. God, is, God is, allow, is fulfilling what he had promised to Abraham. He tells them they're going to be sojourners in the strange land. So Jake, uh, 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 Joseph ends up dying. I think he dies at 110 years old. Joseph dies. And the scripture says they increased, they only went down. When they went down to Egypt from Cana, it was only 70 of them that went down. That was all the sons and daughters of Jacob. It was only 70 of them who went down. It says in the scripture, in, uh, in Exodus chapter 1, they increased yet the more. They continued to increase when they got down to when they got down to Egypt, and the scripture says there arose a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph, right? And all of this is really coming to fulfill what Jesus, I mean, what, what, what God told Abraham, that they would sojourn in a strange land. Again, be mindful that Abraham is made, is, is made a promise, and Abraham is old when he's already made the promise. When, he, and when we encounter him, he's 75 years old, right? So from the, from the time of him encountering God at 75 and God telling him to go to the time in which the promise is fulfilled in Isaac is 25 years. The scripture says Abraham was, it was as much as dead, right? Uh, and God brought the promise to fruition in that he did give him a son. He get, even though Abraham went off left and tried to make his own way and had a son with Hagar and Ishmael, God brings the promise to fruition with, um, with Isaac. And the fruition continues to come to bear. Isaac ends up going down, marrying uh, Isaac, marries Rebekah. He has two sons, Esau, Jacob. Uh, Esau, uh, Jacob steals Esau's birthright. Jacob runs off. He ends up marrying Leah and Rachel. Esau ends up marrying two women. One, um, one ends up being uh, uh, one of the uh, the people from the land, one of the Canaanite women, and it says that uh, uh, she, in so many words, she got on Rebecca's nerve, and Rebecca couldn't stand her. Now that's just the Vince Stokes version. Uh, it says it, it King James version some way different. However, all of that happened, and we now see, we now see in uh, around Exodus chapter one, the real, the the, the full fruition. Because they, they increased, they went down there with 70, and they increased yet the more. And the more they increased, the more this new Pharaoh tried to kill him. That's when you encounter the story of Moses, right? So he's, he's setting this story up to tell the story of Judaism, and, and in telling the story of Judaism, 
All of it is pointing to Jesus coming. He's telling Stephen, tells the story again from, from, from the, the point of view of the three T's, Talmud tradition and the temple, to point them to all of these things lead to Jesus, right? So even when we look at, at Judaism juxtaposed to, to Christianity, right? right. Um, the Talmud, which is the, the, the law, the Talmud is read from right to left, right? It's not read from left to right. It's read from right to left. And it leads to justice, right? That's how the Talmud is read. From right to left, it leads to justice. We read the word of God. We read the Bible from left to right, and it leads to grace, right? Right. Um, Jesus is going to sit on, on the right hand of God, right? Which is the right hand of God is considered the, the hand of grace of God, right? When you see Jesus talking in Matthew 25 about the sheep and the goat, he says the sheep will sit on the right side and the goat will sit on the left side. And he's going to tell them, he's going to separate them, right? And, and, and in telling that story, he says that the sheep are the ones who will be justified, right? And, and all of this talks about how Jesus, in, in him reading, in him telling this narrative, telling it from the point of view, from the vantage point of Judaism, from the Talmud, the tradition, and the temple, he's telling it to lead us to grace. He's telling it to lead us to Jesus, the right side of God, which is the side in which we want to be on. We want to be on his right side, right? Because it is the right side where, where grace abides. So he tells it, and now he's talking about, he's leading us to Moses. Now we're moving into the law. We, we were in the tradition, which is with Abraham. We're moving towards the law. Uh, he, he tells them that they're going to uh, suffer for 400 years. There arose, a Pharaoh who knew not, there arose a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. And what did he do? He put them in bondage. He ended up having their children killed, right? Having the, the, the boys killed, right? Uh, and, and Pharaoh finds... Um, uh, Jochebed's son, Jochebed is Moses' mama, finds Jochebed's son, Moses, in the reeds, and Miriam says, and she ha and, and, and Pharaoh's uh, uh, daughter, sister, I think it's Pharaoh's sister, she ends up having compassion on him, right, has compassion on him, takes a man, Miriam says, shall I go fetch one of the Hebrew women, Miriam goes, gets her mama, Jochebed, Jochebed gets paid to take care of her own child, and Moses ends up living in, the, in, in Pharaoh's house, right? It, 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 living in Pharaoh's house. And, uh, and he does not fully understand that he is Jewish, right? Then he is called, and then God calls him, and that's when we get to the narrative of let my people go. But the covenant is given to Abraham, and the sign of the covenant is shown through circumcision. It's a physical sign. It's a physical sign. It's a physical cutting away of extra. It's a physical cutting away of uh, uh, foreskin, cutting away of flesh um, to, to, to show that we pay, that we cut away to, to give honor and homage to God. It's a sign of covenant. The, the, the circumcision is a sign of covenant. And the, the sign of circumcision, Abraham is given it, and he's given it, and he gives it to uh, 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 Ishmael, he gives it to all the men in his house, in his camp. He gives it to Isaac, and it becomes a tradition moving on. So when we get to Moses, we get to Moses, and God calls Moses. In chapter 3, he calls Moses. Around chapter 4, uh, Moses is going back with his, his two, two children and his wife, and his two children have not been circumcised. His two sons have not been circumcised. I think it's Exodus chapter 4. And, uh, and it said the Lord was going to kill Moses because he had, not, he had not kept that tradition. And that tradition is set them apart. That tradition set them apart for who they were, right? It set them apart for, for they had been chosen. It was a sign of their sanctification. It was a, it was a sign of their election, right? And... He had not done that to his two sons. Uh, the text says that his wife, I can't remember his wife's name, but his wife ends up circumcising the sons herself and putting the, the, um, putting the, the, the foreskin on, on, on Moses' feet and it becomes, it becomes um, uh, uh, acceptable to God. 
and God accepts them. So that's around Exodus chapter 4. The sign of circumcision is a sign of covenant. So uh, how could Moses lead these people if Moses had not even done right with his own home, right? That, that, that's the point that, was, that is being made in that instance, right? Moses, you have, to, you have to do right in your own home. You cannot lead these people if, if, you do, if you're not observing the sign of the covenant, although you yourself have the sign of the covenant. So he does that. So we're in verse number, we, we, we got through verse 6, 7, 8, 9. And the patriarch moved with envy and sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. God was when we, we passed 9. Verse number 10, and delivered him out of all the affliction and gave him favor, wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. And there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out his father's first. This is exactly the story I just told you. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. Joseph, kindred, was made known unto Pharaoh. This is verse number 13, verse 14. Then sent Pharaoh and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, three score and 15 souls. So we say three score and 15, uh, three score is, is 60, 20, 40, 60, uh, 15 is 75. So 75 people, like I said, 75 people went down to Egypt, right? They started out with 75, but they grew. So Jacob went down in Egypt and died and he and, the, and our father and were carried over into Shechem and laid in a sepulcher that Abraham brought forth a sum of money for the son of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to age Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. This is what I'm talking about. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. And same, same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end, that they might not live. In which time Moses was born. Now we get to the, the part where I just finished talking about. Moses was born, and exceeding fear and nourished by in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up. Pharaoh's daughter, sorry, not a sister, Pharaoh's daughter. And nourished him for her own son. And Moses learned all the wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty in word and in deed. And when he was full 40 years old, he spent 20 years in Pharaoh's house. Uh, he spent 40 years with Pharaoh. He's going to spend 40 years in the wilderness, right? Uh, he lives 100, is it 120, 40, 40, 40? Yeah, he lives 120 years. Uh, and when he, 40 years old, came into his heart to visit his brethren, 40 years in Pharaoh with Pharaoh, and seeing one of them suffering wrong, uh, sacrifices by, hold on, see one of them suffering wrong, he defended him and avenged him and was oppressed and smote the Egyptians, for he supposed the brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day they showed themselves, then Moses fled, so Moses leave, and when 40 years was expired, he, he lived 40 years in the, he lived 40 years in Pharaoh's house, he lived 40 years in exile, then he's going to live 40 years in the wilderness. So all of this talks about the journey in which most, we, we're shifting from Abraham, one patriarch, to the next patriarch, shifting to Moses. And Moses, as the patriarch, brings in, Abraham brings in the tradition, Moses brings in the Talmud because it is under Moses where you get the law. And in getting the law, you have you began to uh, 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 get a, 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 a group of people who are just family members living, living amongst each other around, around the mountain, amongst each other. Now they have a set of laws that's going to guide them. They're going to have a set of law that's going to guide them and going to show them, again, lead them to justice. The law is supposed to lead them to justice. But the true meaning of the law, the true meaning of the law that came from God was to show us that we could not live up to the standard. That was the true meaning of co the coming of the law. We could not live up to the standard for the law and we had a need for a savior because we could not keep all the commandments right moses brings with him and when he when he invokes moses when when stephen evokes moses he's talking about the law in which god gives moses upon mount sinai 
and the and the law in which they are they, they began to build their identity around while they're in the wilderness right then um so we're in, in chapter 7 this is around verse 31 and when moses saw it, he wondered at the sight and he drew near to behold it and the voice of the lord came unto him saying i am the god of thy father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob right so he again He's connecting it to the patriarchs of the faith because all of this is going to lead to all of them are pointing to Jesus. You remember Jesus says before Abraham, I am, I was, it was me, right? He's pointing, all of these are pointing to who Jesus is. Uh, 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 Stephen is intentional on making this argument because Stephen wants them to know that even our forefathers, this is not something that, that that just that just came up. This is not a doctrine or a theology or a theology rather that just comes up out of nowhere. Even our forefathers had an understanding in their dis own dispensation that there is going to come one greater than Abraham. There's going to come one greater than Moses. There's going to come one greater than Elijah, and his name is Jesus. And this is the point Stephen is trying to make when he invokes all of these narratives about uh, 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 the, the Jewish faith, invoking the history, invoking the tradition, invoking the, 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 the Talmud, invoking the temple. All of these are supposed to point to the Savior of the world. All of these should point to, are pointing to the Savior. Then said the Lord to him, put off thy shoes with our own holy ground. Uh, verse number 37, this is that Moses which said unto the Lord, he brought, okay, verse number 36, he brought them out after he had showed them wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. I want to stop there. Um, Moses goes, d does 10 plagues. Um, he, 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 he oversees 10 plagues. After he oversees, he oversees nine plagues. Then we get to the final plague. The final plague was a plague of death, right? Uh, the final plague was the plague of death. And that plague of death um, is going to be the, the, the straw to break the camel's back that leads them out of bondage, for which we get the, the Passover, for which we get the Feast of Unleavened Bread, for which we get... Uh, for for us, for which communion comes from, right? So Moses goes and he he invokes the very final. Now you need to understand this. God is proving a point in every step of the way in which God is stopping, right? When God it says God hardened Pharaoh's heart, God hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he might show his power to Egypt, I mean to Israel. God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that God might show his power to Israel. So every plague is important and it all, uh, it's acrostic, it leads up to the next, it leads up to the next, which leads up to the ultimate one, which is death, right? So when, uh, when, when, when Pharaoh tells Moses, I think it's after the eighth plague, to get out of his face, and he will never, he don't want to see him no more. For the day he sees him, he will die. That's what, that's what um, uh, Pharaoh tells Moses. And, Mo, and Moses goes, and he says, fine. Uh, there's one more plague after that, and I think that's darkness. Nah, I think that's darkness. Then the final plague, God tells Moses, and this is why it, it's, it's a feast of hastiness, right? They had to leave Israel. I mean, they had to leave Egypt in haste, right? Um, they, he told them to go borrow gold, go borrow gold from the Egyptians. And this is how you know the Egyptians uh, were just the, the pawns in the, in, in the entire narrative of, how, of what God was doing. And the Egyptians were, were tired of, of Pharaoh's foolishness too. Because the Egyptians could see Goshen, where the Israelites live, they got light. Goshen, they 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 their um animals are not dying. 
They don't have frogs down in ghosts. They don't have locusts down in ghosts. They don't have darkness down in ghosts. Goshen is all right. We are the ones suffering because Pharaoh fool itself will not let these people go. So this is how you can tell that, that, the, that the Egyptians had gotten tired of it and were empathetic. The Egyptians in the end had empathy towards, um, towards the, the, the Israelites. The Israelites went to ask the Egyptians of gold. They wouldn't ask the Egyptians for gold for this feast that they had to, for this feast. They didn't know what was going to happen with the feast. But they, they went to ask the Egyptians for gold, and the Egyptians let them have it, have it rather, and they squandered the land. They, they pillaged the land, rather. They took all of their gold with them. And uh, this is where you get the Pasco land. You know, they kill a lamb, and they had to put the, the blood from the lamb. It had to be, listen, this is, this is part of the tradition from which the, the, the tradition of, uh, of, of Passover comes from, uh, which, which uh, also talks about the law, right? They had to get a lamb that was unblemished. Firstborn, firstborn had to be the first one. Firstborn, unblemished. They had to kill it. They had to put the... Uh, they had to put the blood on the door. They had to eat with their shoes on. They had to eat lentils. They, they, from whence we get matzah, they had to eat unleavened bread. That's where you get matzah from. And they ate and they, in haste, they had to leave Egypt because the death angel had gone by and killed all the Egyptians, including in Pharaoh's house. Okay. Killed the firstborn. It didn't say firstborn, but it said killed firstborn. And it wasn't just the firstborn child. It was all firstborns. So, keep that in mind. Again, being mindful that, that everything that Stephen is doing is, is leading to Jesus. Jesus becomes the Paschal Lamb. Jesus becomes, for us, the one who becomes the ultimate sacrifice from death destroying us and passing us over because of his blood that now covers us and saves us from wretchedness and saves us from sinfulness. It becomes so Stephen is, it, it knows exactly what he's doing and telling the story the way that he tells it. And this is the Moses, verse number 37, which said unto the children of Israel, uh oh, he brought them out. This is Moses when they refused, saying, Who made thee ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of angels which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness for 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Again, he's using now he's using the law. What they had all what they wouldn't know, what they what they had heard in the church, what they had heard in the temple. He's telling them again, even Moses the father, even Moses the one who spoke to God face to face, even Moses speaks about this man named Jesus. You all are coming to condemn me, but our forefathers have spoken of him. Listen, you do not get a a a, a, a great a, a dissertation like this, you don't get a great oration like this uh, 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 of telling the history and making connections without being in the spirit. This is why Stephen was chosen as a deacon, because Stephen was in full of the Holy Spirit. Remember the, 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 the three reasons, the, the, the three requirements to be a deacon. You had to be full of the Holy Spirit, you had to be of good rapport, and you had to have wisdom. Wisdom. He shows all three of the criteria for being a deacon and him giving his dissertation and oration about why he uh, why he is talking and preaching about Jesus, because the same Jesus that our forefathers talked about is the same Jesus that I'm preaching to y'all and you all don't want to hear it. This verse number 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel with which spake to him in the, in, in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. Now he's, 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 he's shifting the narrative. He, 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 he set Moses up. 
you all honor Moses because remember, remember the, the remember what their um what their um charge against him was in, in chapter six. For we heard him say, this is chapter six, verse fourteen. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and shall change the custom which Moses delivered to us. So he's intentional on, on responding and rebutting, using their words, using their words to show them that this same Moses in which you all have put on the pedestal, the same Moses that you all have made a God, this same Moses, you all, our forefathers, turned their backs against. They, back, they, they, they were backbiting him. They were dogging him. Uh, uh, Miriam, his sister, talked so bad about his wife. Uh, uh, they call out his cousins, first cousins at that, says you are not the only one in which can lead us. Listen, God, God makes it clear. This is why you have to be careful about how you talk to God's preacher, God's prophet. God makes it clear about his preacher, his prophet. He makes it clear that if the preacher or the prophet is wrong, he says, I will correct them. Now that's the word. Now I'm not telling you what, the, I'm telling you what does says the Lord. It says, uh, 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 touch not my anointment, do my prophet no harm, right? And if the preacher wrong, if the prophet is wrong and Moses was wrong, God says, you let me correct Moses. You don't correct Moses because I sent Moses and God will, will chastise you for chastising the man or the woman of God because God is saying, I chastise them. You, you stay in your place and I'm going to chastise. And that's exactly what he tells the Korah. He tells him, listen, if, 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 if a man prophesied, I, I, you know, he, he's talking about me in very nuanced and very, very uh, 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 symbolic ways. He says, but I put my words in Moses' mouth. I speak to Moses mouth to mouth, face to face. Moses is whom I chose. And how dare you, this is what Korah, I mean, this is what God says to Korah. He says, how dare you bring up something against the man in which I put over you all. This is the same Moses in which these people are using to bring all against Stephen. And Stephen is saying, you all mistreated Moses just like you did this Jesus. That's the point that he's making. He's connecting it. He's bringing it full circle, connecting it back to you all say your, your charge against me is that I talk about this Jesus who is going to uh, transform the customs of Moses. He and Jesus is, I mean, and Stephen is saying, but the same Moses, you all didn't even listen to him. And the same thing you do with Jesus. He's going to say that. Let's get to it. Uh, this is he that was in the church in the, uh, saying unto to Aaron, verse number 40, chapter 7, verse number 40, saying unto Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what became of him. Listen. They, he, Moses had been up there for, 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 for a few days, and they said, we don't know what happened to him. Make us these golden images, and we're going we gonna to worship them. And they made a calf, and Aaron made a calf. In those days, and offered sacrifices unto idols and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Again, this goes against the, the, the Talmud. The, Talmud the, first, the very first uh, law is, thou shalt have no other God before me. That's the very first law. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heavens, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, I took up the tabernacle of Molech. That was one of the gods of their land. One of the, one of the foreign gods. And the stars of your gods are Remsam and figures which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness. Again, the tabernacle. He's using these three T's, the tabernacle, the, 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 the temple, the tradition, and the time. He's using these three T's to point to Jesus. He's using these three T's to point to Jesus. Uh, witness in the wilderness as he has appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua into the possession of the Gentiles. Now they're going into the land. They're possessing the land. Now we're in the book of Joshua. He's following the law. He's following the law. He's following the narrative. Possession of the Gentiles whom God drove out, drove out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Who found favor? Now he, he talked about Joshua. He talked about the judges. Now he's into the, now he's into the monarchy. He, he went from the patriarchs of the
went to Moses. He went to David. He's with David. Uh, and it says, who found favor before God, uh, uh, unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find the tabernacle for the Lord God of, ja uh, of Jacob. Listen, he's trying. He's trying. He's getting us little by little. We already got the tradition. That was with, that was with um, Abraham. We already got the, the Talmud. That was with Moses. We're getting to the temple. David had a desire to build a temple for God. David had a desire to build a temple. Uh, uh, God said he was a man of war. He had too much blood on his head. He couldn't build the temple. He tells, he tells him that his son is going to build the temple, and he's leading us to the temple. Um, uh, which are also our fathers that came after, brought in with Joshua. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who found, verse number 46, who found favor before God and desired to find the tabernacle for the God of Jacob. You know they're, not, they're called Israel because they are... Uh, Israel becomes Jacob's changed name after he fights with the with the angel. But Solomon built the house. Now we with the temple. We are we got the tradition now. We have the Talmud now. Now we have the temple. The three T's that's guiding Judaism. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as with the prophets. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house shall ye build for me? Says the Lord. Or what is the place of any rest? These are the, this is what the Lord has said to them. And God said, I will let be mindful in the tradition of Judaism, which is different, uh, uh, which has grown, with, which evolved. In the tradition of Judaism, they lived a very um, nomadic life. They lived a very agrarian life. And each, uh, uh, when, they, when they take, when they possess the, the, um, the, the promised land, remember when they are in the wilderness, they have one tabernacle. When they're in the wilderness, they have one tabernacle. And you have to remember, when they go into the promised land, remember that the Levites don't have any possession in the land. Why? Because the Levites are supposed to live throughout the entire nation of Israel because each area was supposed to have its own temple. Each area has its own temple. Now, this I'm going to give you some, some, some anecdotal history in regards to black church, black church. Uh, in the Old Testament, in, in Genesis, um, Shiloh, Shiloh, the, uh, uh, the house of God, Shiloh, the place where God named dwells. Shiloh was in Shechem, right? Shiloh, Shiloh. And then not only Shiloh, Bethel. Bethel uh, was, was, another, was another place in which they, uh, they worshiped God. These are di two different, two very different places where worship of God occurs, Shiloh and Bethel. Now, when you look at black church, you look at black church, um, in northern, black church in America, northern city. This is anecdotal history, anecdotal history. Uh, black churches in America, uh, every city just about, every, especially every city that deals with uh, uh, deals with abolitionists, right? They have a Shiloh. Shiloh is the Baptist church often. We have Shiloh down here on 55th Shiloh. You have Shiloh. You have a Shiloh, which is a Baptist church, or you have a Bethel, which is a Methodist church, right? Uh, the AME church, Mother Bethel is in Philadelphia, a beautiful, beautiful facility. Um, Bethel, in every city up north, even here, even here, you have, you have Shiloh, you have Bethel. Right, Bethel was the, the Methodist. Shiloh were the black were, were the Baptists. Right? Why? 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 And this goes back to the Bible because they use codes. They use code words, and they would say, "Go to the house of God." And you knew the house of God was Shiloh from the Old Testament, Bethel from the Old Testament. That's just some anecdotal history for you, connecting blackness to the Bible. Right? Right. So. Uh, they wanted to, uh, uh, David wanted to build a temple, God told him no, Solomon, uh, Solomon builds a temple. They went from, from having temples in every place, Hebron, Temple at Shechem, Temple, uh, temple uh, uh, rather, you know, all these various different places, right? Temple over the, over the sea where, uh, I mean, not, I'm sorry, beyond the wall where uh, 
it be, be, be beyond Jericho where Manasseh and, and Reuben ended up staying, right? All, they all had their own temples. God, Mo, not Moses, uh, uh, David had the idea to have a centralized temple. This is going to be important because it's also why when the when when the shift when when the, when the tip I mean when the when the kingdom breaks why they don't why they begin to worship idol gods right so David God said David can do it Solomon builds this great temple he builds this temple it's a great temple first temple beautiful temple uh, it said in, in Solomon day in Solomon's day it was like silver was like I mean gold was abundant and silver was as nothing right. Solomon, David had set Solomon up to build the temple. He had set, he had stock, stockpiled stuff, so the temple was built. Solomon uh, uh, inaugurates the temple. The temple has the glory of God, and this is a place where God's name dwells, right? In Jerusalem, the city of David. And now people, it becomes a centralized location for worship. Now people have to come from all over the place, right? Everywhere. So now, now they have to go to Jerusalem, from all over the country, all over Israel, to worship centrally once a year, right? When the when the um, when the um, when the monarchy um, breaks from from David's descendants because of the sin of David and David slept with Uriah's wife Bathsheba, uh, and, and God told him that, that you know he was going. He would always have one who would sit on the throne. So David, he let him keep the southern kingdom. But it, the, the kingdom split uh, when Solomon's son Rehoboam became becomes the king. Rehoboam becomes king, and I and they make um, I don't think his name is Jeconiah. Um, I want to say his name begins with a J though. Um, I, I think it is. It, nah, I don't think it's King Jeconiah. But anyhow, the king that um. Jonah Dab. Maybe it's Jonah Dab. I can't think. I, I'll let you know what it is. The king that 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 takes the the, the 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 northern kingdom, which is known in Israel. The king that takes the northern kingdom known in Israel, and Roboam keeps the southern kingdom, which is Judah. The king says he starts to make them worship idol gods. Because he says, if they go back down to each, I mean go back down to Judah to worship the Lord our God. He said, the people will, will, will turn from me. So that started them, the northern kingdom, to start into idol worship. Because he did not want them to come back down to worship in the centralized location where the Lord said his name would dwell, which was, at, which, which was in the temple. Um, uh, verse number 50, Have not my hands made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, Ye do always, all, always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do ye. Listen, he he sets them up. He sets them up as a stiff-necked people. He he sets his entire Stephen. Stephen sets the entire an argument up for them to be a stiff stiff-necked people and for for them to be no good. And he tells them he 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 gets them through the 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 the, the tradition. Gets them through the Talmud. Gets them through the temple. He gets them through the three T's that guys Judaism. And then Stephen lays into them with critiques of their, of their religious piety and how their religious piety is really what killed Jesus. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. He tells them, you're stiff-necked, you are, are no good you are you 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 are you, you you don't follow prophets you don't follow leadership you are just like your 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 our forefathers who did it to the prophets before them which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted you listen he is going in he connected all three teeth to get to the point where he makes his he he has his thesis he has his i mean he has his his, his his thesis is at his antithesis, and now he's going with the synthesis that they are stiff-necked just like their forefathers, and they have murdered people, murdered, they have murdered prophets 
for preaching, for speaking that which the Lord had told them to do. And he makes it, sets himself up and says, and I'm in good company because so as they prosecuted the prophets before, and even as they prosecuted Jesus, even though they were pointing to him, you stiff neck, unwilling to listen, ungodly, un uh, 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 ungodly people, you all are, you're just like your forefathers. And that was too hard for the people. That was too hard for the people to understand. It says, fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showered before, uh, showed before of the coming of the just ones of whom ye have been now, the betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And guess what? When they heard these things, it cut them to their heart. Verse 54. They heard Stephen telling the story, uh, uh, connecting the dots, telling them that they telling them of the, about their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, David, Solomon, telling them the, 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 about the, tra the, the tradition, the temple, and the, the, uh, uh, and the Talmud, tell them all of these things, connecting all these things, just to tell them that they were no good. All these people were fit to be tied. These people were upset. Listen, don't get upset when you are convicted by the word of God, uh, by what the preacher is preaching from the word of God. Stephen just stood flat foot and preach what thus said the Lord, and guess what? It offended them. And guess what? The gospel will offend if you are not living righteous, if you are not living holy. It will offend. You will say, how dare you get up here and, bull and, 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 and use the pulpit as a bully? It's not about using the pulpit as a bully. It's about preaching against sin, preaching against that which is wrong, which is exactly what Stephen does. And what do they do to him? Listen, just because you preach the word of God does not mean people are going to receive it. Just because you preach the word of God does not mean people are going to receive you. They will hate you because you stood flat foot and preached the word of God that convicted them. How dare you tell me I am, a, I, don't, don't tell me that I can't be comfortable in my sin. Don't tell me that I can't do what I want to do. Don't tell me that I can't live how I want to live. Don't tell me that you tell me what I want to hear and Stephen refused to do it and he preached Jesus and they could not take it and this is again how you know they're Jewish they take stones and they stone Stephen they st stoning that's how you know Jesus wasn't killed by the Jewish he was killed because of Jews he wasn't killed by the Jews Jews stoned Romans put you on the cross. They, listen, they could not take what Peter was saying. It was too hard for them. It was too hard for them to hear. We, the, him calling them stiff neck. him telling them that they don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen, sometimes it cuts deep. Conviction cuts deep. Be, but but it does not mean that you we are not it does not mean that the preacher is not supposed to preach the word of God you know and I you know and I'll say this only thing separate a prophet from a heretic is time the only thing separate a prophet from a heretic is time uh, two thousand and eight uh, they found every clip they could find from Jeremiah Wright when he preached the day Jerusalem fell now he preached that sermon in two thousand and one great sermon the day Jerusalem fell preached that in two thousand one. They found it in 2008 to use it against Barack Obama and him running for president. Oh, they they talked about Jeremiah Wright, told him he was uh, uh, he wasn't no good, told him uh, uh, he wasn't called of God. He wasn't preaching the word of God. He was preaching a gospel of hate, called him anti-Semitic. Now he preaching the word of God, stood flat foot preaching the word of God. And guess what? They did not want to hear it. They did not want to hear what Jeremiah Wright had to say. I tell you, and then they, they took one excerpt from the sermon in which he began to outline from the day Jerusalem fell, found in Psalms 137, when he said, God damn America for the things that America has done to this country. God damn America for how America has done slaves. God damn, and he wasn't saying GD in the sense of cursing them. He said, God should damn America for 
the sins in which America had engaged in. And guess what? Guess what happened? Guess what happened? They talked about Jeremiah, threw him under the bus, did him dog wrong. Jeremiah right said, Jeremiah, I mean not Jeremiah, Barack Obama refused to even acknowledge him as his as his pastor, right? Oh no, he's not my pastor no more. 2023. Now people use the that the, the, the day Jerusalem fell sermon to talk about the atrocities that America has put upon non-people, non-white people, and, and that is to say people of color. That, that happened. That happened. They, they, listen, they, they condemned Jeremiah Wright. Listen, prophets, those who are prophets, those who are called of God, those who, who preach the word of God, like Stephen was doing, listen, are, are, you know, we are called from God. We are not called from man. And there, there may not be a sermon that, that makes you feel good inside. It might not be a sermon that makes you feel warm. And it might not be a sermon that get people in the producers. Who, who wants to be told that the, 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 the sin I'm in is about to send me to hell? Who wants to be told that every week, right? But if, if, if they are a prophet of God, they can do nothing. I think it's uh, 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 Amos, who says, he says, a uh, 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 lion roars, who can but not fear? And, and, and God speaks, who can but not prophesy? That's exactly what Stephen does. He stands flat foot, he prophesies, and guess what? Guess what happens to him? He's stoned to death. They kill prophets, they kill Jesus, they kill Martin Luther King, they kill prophets. They, if they don't kill you physically, they will kill your character. They killed the character of Jeremiah. They kill prophets. The point is, Stephen stood and Stephen still proclaimed. And even unto death, that's a prophet. One who will stand and declare what thus says the Lord, even if it means their life. All righty. That's our Bible study for the night. Uh, we, got a, we, 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 went, we went a long way. We went, through, we went on a journey tonight. We went on a journey. We we did get finished with uh uh a not Amos with Acts chapter uh seven. We got finished with the whole chapter, and I want to remind you there were three T's guiding Stephen and what he was doing. It was the town. It was the tradition, the Talmud. That's the law, and it was the temple. The final was the temple, and it led them to all that all that he did. He was pointing them to Jesus. He said all these things point to Jesus, and you all killed him, and now you're gonna kill me. All righty, I want to remind us that every Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m., there is Bible, I mean, there is prayer meeting, praise, and testimony here in the sanctuary of the church every Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. I want you all, if you have time, ma'am, sir, come on now. I want all of you all to come to Sunday school. Sunday school is how you learn. Sunday school and Bible study are the two ways in which you grow in your faith. You grow in your faith, Sunday school and Bible study. Uh, I want to